I get asked all the time, how can I get more stars, forks, contributors to my repo? Literally one of the DMs I get the most. And you shouldn't DM people your repo and say, give me more stars or share it in a Discord and say, give me more stars, contribution, welcome. I mean, it's great that contributions are welcome, but spamming people, people then don't want to contribute and don't want to get involved. It works against you. What you need to do is make your repo stand out. And so what do you need to do to make your repo stand out? Nothing that hard, actually. First of all, you can just hide the features on GitHub for your repo that you're not using. So if there's a wiki along the top up here and you're not using it, which I recommend you don't use it, not because I don't recommend documentation, I highly recommend documentation, but I recommend putting it into a docs folder in the repo so it gets all that great contribution, pull request, great stuff. So hide it if you're not using it. Down the right hand side, if you're not using releases, I recommend you do, but until you do use it, I recommend you hide it. Packages down the side, same again. And you can hide them by clicking on the cog at the top right and just ticking these on and off. So as you use them, you can then tick them back on. Have a description up here and have a link to the deployed version if it exists or a website. That's like number one, but joint number one, you need to have a good readme, like have a screenshot, like have an animated GIF. What is it that your project does? Like you've got probably like 10 or 15 15 seconds, okay, I have no scientific evidence for this, but a really short amount of time to get people to think, hmm, let me dig a bit deeper into this project. So don't put your quick start right at the top or your prerequisites, put a screenshot, put a demo right at the top so you can show people how awesome your project is. And then you can get into the prerequisites and installation steps and all those sorts of things. The next thing you wanna do is automate as much as possible. GitHub Actions are amazing and you can do so much with just a few lines of YAML config that you can probably copy and paste from another project. So if you've got a linter, if you're building your project, whatever it is, run those on GitHub Actions. So therefore, when someone does contribute, it makes your life easier and their life easier. You can both get immediate feedback on the state of their changes. And then you can still have that collaboration discussion, but it's discussing the more important things rather than spacing or missing a semicolon or whatever it is. So you still want to have that collaboration, but on the important stuff, not on the silly niggly little things. Then number two or three, I can't remember where we are, but you know, I've still got some more tips to come. So whatever number we're on, go to, not the settings tab, go to the insights tab, and then go to community standards and have a look at what GitHub recommends that you do. Do you have a full house here? Do you have ticks all the way down? And most of them have a button on the right that you can just say add, and it gives you some options like of license and code of conduct. Make sure you have those. The next tip to getting more people to find your project, to star it, to fork it, to contribute, all that great stuff, you need issues and you need issue labels. Let people find your project. When they're searching GitHub for projects, they search by issues and labels and technology. And I have a video on that a few videos ago on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description below. So make sure you're using labels. Your project will come with about eight or nine standard labels. They're good to get started. And then if you want more labels, there is an open source standard labels you can use. I do also have a video on that as well. I'll put a link in the description below. The next thing you want to do is make sure you use pull requests and when someone creates a pull request, always give a reply. Even if you want the contribution, just merge it. I would recommend giving a reply, ideally within 24 hours. Even if the reply is, hey, I'll take a look at it next weekend because I'm away at the moment. That's fine, but just give some notice that you have seen it and you'll get to it when, when you can. I think that's really, really important. And if you're closing a pull request because you don't want it, make sure you put a comment in there. Do reply, say why you don't want it. Maybe suggest some other issues and tasks that they can do to get involved in the project. Make it friendly because people will look at your closed pull requests to see how friendly you are. So don't have the conversation about closing the pull request somewhere else like on Discord or in DMs. You really want to have it publicly so people can see that your project is friendly and wants contributors. Discussions are really great to have discussions that aren't issues. And what, what is the difference, Eddie? What do you mean? Well, an issue is more performing a task, right? So add a homepage would be an issue. But raising the question, do we need a homepage or a certain amount of 
pages or whatever it is, it would probably be more of a discussion. And discussion is like an issue, but it, it's threaded. So you can have multiple conversations under the same topic. And then you can convert a discussion to an issue and an issue to a discussion. So you can move things around if they get started in the wrong place. I want to make this a short video, so I'll probably leave it there. What are your thoughts and suggestions to make your repo stand out? Leave a comment below. And while you're down there, give this video a thumbs up. It really helps support the channel, costs you nothing. And if you haven't subscribed already, do subscribe. We do have an Eddie Hub Discord, so I really look forward to geeking out with you between videos and live streams. You guessed it, link in the description below.